everybody welcome to the channel welcome back all my subscribers and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel I'll be very much appreciated of it and today coming up in this video I'd just like to explain a little bit of the causes by sunlight about how that it can affect your koi aeration and general chat so without further ado I'll jump straight into it Hello guys, I just want to give everyone a little tip basically, um, as we all love the summer British weather, or any sunlight around the world, a lot of people don't realise that koi can actually get sunburnt, and the main reason for this is in the, uh, in the warmer temperatures when your water rises, um, sorry, heats up, your water doesn't hold as much oxygen, so if you haven't fitted an air pump, keep the koi down on the bottom of the pond I mean don't get me wrong the koi do they love coming up and bait basking in the sun they absolutely love it but with the actual sunlight itself they can get sunburnt from it so I highly recommend that I mean I provide I've got a roof over my pond but if you've got a complete open pond I highly recommend you know you don't have to have a roof on it but if you've got like an umbrella you can put up for the day or if you've got a sheet or any sort of if you can provide any sort of shade area because with an open pond the koi's got nowhere to go to so if we have get you know if we get a lovely bit of sunshine come out the koi come up they sit and bask in it all day long what can happen is that when the what you notice generally you you, you notice a lot more in uh on white fish um, that you can see it almost looks like a disease or a parasite like you get a red flaking across their backs and that's basically down to being sunburnt but like I was saying the main reason for that is because obviously the hotter the water temperatures the less dissolved oxygen there is in the water so it brings all the koi to the top of the pond they've got nowhere else to go apart from absolutely get slaughtered by the sunlight so yeah, I definitely highly recommend having um, some sort of shade or some people even use like a foam pad. Just put a foam pad in one corner of your pond. It doesn't have to be in there every day, but if you if you wake up in the morning or look on the weather forecast and it, give it out really hot for the week or a couple days, I highly recommend just, you know, providing a little bit of shade for your koi or goldfish or any sort of pond fish what you keep. Yeah, just a little tip just to give everyone a heads up and make sure that they can keep their koi as healthy as possible. Oh, well then, so uh, aeration. It's really, really highly recommended that you aerate your ponds, especially in the warmer temperatures, because as the water temperature rises, what happens is basically the water itself can't, can't hold as much aeration to the actual water as it gets dissolved with the heat so what i tend to do is add an air pump and then i just add lines into the pond so i've got one going at the very back of the pond one in the corner of the pond and then one in another corner of the pond yeah so the main reason why i add the aeration to the pond in the corners of the pond is purely down to the fact of that you can still visibly see the fish from the middle of the pond and uh, you find any sediment that builds up generally gets built up on the corners the edges and surrounding of your pond so I find by keeping the aeration on the side of the pond it keeps everything moving and it's a bonus because you can still visibly see your fish in the middle as well so it works really well to be fair um, just one of the things I do you know there's other ways of doing it you can put your aeration in the middle coming up from a bottom drain i haven't got a bottom drain i'm just showing people certain ways different ways of how you can still create a good koi pond and have a good system that works well on a cheaper budget pigeons one thing you don't want near your pond Pigeons can be a right pain. They can uh, 
they can bring you plenty of problems. One of the biggest problems is that they bring parasites to the pond. In their poo, their feces. And this one's just about to dip down and drink his water like he always does. This little fellow is a little wood pigeon. The next door neighbours tend to feed him and he's worked out that they can come down for a drink. Yeah, so I'm not a bird expert, but I can tell you one thing. That pigeons carry up to 60 different types of diseases, parasite related, and it generally it stems down to that they carry it in their in their feces. So when they poo, you really don't want that going into your water to create any chance whatsoever that you could end up getting parasite into your pond. Just a heads up, also toads, frogs, all exactly the same. So yeah. Anybody else want to ask me any questions or want any information? If I know, I'm more than happy to help or try to help. The whole idea of me with this channel is to help as many people as I can. I'm quite enjoying making the videos. And um, yeah, I'll just let it finish up. I'm just going to just let you watch a bit of the koi for a little bit and... Um, like I said, if there's any if, if there's any questions or any videos that you want me to make, you know I'm not the best at reading and writing. I do try my best. Um, what it comes down to, I rather just try to explain it into a, in a video if I can, if possible. But like I said, I'm always more than happy to help, and uh, I can't thank everybody enough for subscribing to the channel and getting where I am today. And um, I am really enjoying doing it. And all the comments, I always like reading them. And some of them, you know, they put a smile on my face. And some of them I have a laugh. And I do like to think that I'm a decent bloke. And try my best and do what I do. And I know there's other ways of doing pond stuff. And having a bottom drain. And doing stuff differently. And different filtrations. But I can guarantee, you know, you could have a 30 gram pond. I guarantee if you test my water quality, it ain't far short from what theirs are. So I'm pretty good at doing what I do. I know quite a bit. I'm not bigging myself up too much, but this is just a way that works for me. And um, I really enjoy doing it, to be fair. So like I said, anything that I can help you with, I'm always happy to help. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.